Good day students, my name is Adele, the geography teacher. I will be taking geography at the level of year 10 and specifically we will be looking at the works for the third time. If you check your scheme of work very well, you will notice that the first topic we will be looking at this term is weather and climate. So I will give you some tips on how to navigate your way through this particular topic. And if you check your screen through really very well, you notice that we have it for some weeks. So this is the first week. We'll be looking at it. I have already uplo I've uploaded your some work on the word PowerPoint. So I want you to go through them very well. They will be very helpful. As a matter of fact, they are very explicit and they will go a long way to what to help you through this particular topic. And before I go further, I quickly want to highlight some of the the learning objective for this particular topic. The first one is the definition of what? Weather. We're also going to look at what? Weather station. We'll be looking at the features of the CBC screen. And lastly, for this particular class, for the week one, we'll be looking at what? The elements of weather. So let's quickly go, go through. Now, if you realize at the level of year eight, uh, when you were in year eight, I told you something we, we learned about uh, weather. And I remember telling you that weather is the condition of the atmosphere or day-to-day -day condition of the atmosphere at a particular time. Weather is observed for, for short period of time, usually maybe from second to second, day to day, minute by minute to minute, or hour to hour. Unlike in the case of climate, weather is usually very short time and they cover very short regions of the earth. Like I mentioned earlier, weather is the condition of the atmosphere. You must also know that atmosphere means envelope of gases enveloping the earth. Gases enveloping the earth. You have gases, collection of gases that envelop the earth. They determine the weather. The nature or the condition of this gas will determine what you experience per time for each of these uh, elements. So, I stop on the definition of weather. I take you next to what? To the word weather station. We have a station we call the weather station, or what we call the metro, uh, meteorological station. There's usually it's usually a garden, a garden set up for housing weather instruments. For every of the weather element that we have, they have their what weather instruments. So the weather instruments, the weather instruments are usually are generally kept in the what in a meteorological garden, otherwise known as what weather stations. So you see in your in your PowerPoint, where I, specific, where I mentioned the conditions that must be met for every weather station. One key thing that you must observe for every weather station is that the weather station must be grassed. The floor must be grassed. They must not be concrete. The reason why they must be grassed, not concrete, is because concrete has the ability to absorb heat. And when they absorb heat, they emit the heat and the heat affects weather records or weather readings. So the best thing to use is what we call grass field or grass land. Another one is that a metrological station must be fenced. And when you are fencing it, you use wire fence or use what? A wooden fence. You, you, must, you do not apply or use a concrete fence. The reason is because the concrete has the ability to absorb it. And when they absorb the heat, over time, the heat can be re-emitted or emitted back to the surrounding environment and they will eventually alter the record of reading. The last one is that these weather gardens must be situated in places far away from buildings and other structures so that they don't influence or affect weather records. We are done with what? A meteorological station, what we call the what? Weather station. The next one is not the well, it's, it's, it's what we call the Stevenson screen. There's a screen we call the Stevenson screen. They are, they are very important in weather or in weather. So for every weather activity or weather stations, there's a place, a box we call the CBC screen. If you might wonder what the what's the meaning of CBC. The CBC itself is a name. So the person who invented this particular screen is called CBC. So we name it after the man, CBC screen. So a CBC screen is usually what? A wooden box. Wooden box, they are made of what? Wood and they are painted white. So they are, they are used primarily to house, to, what, to house 
certain weather equipment. The first equipment they use the handling is what? Maximum and minimum thermometer. You remember maximum and minimum thermometers is the kind of thermometer that the geographer use in measuring atmospheric temperature. Another instrument that the civil screen house is what we call the hygrometer. Hygrometer consists of two thermometers also, which is what? Which is what? The wet and dry bulb thermometer. Hygrometer is used in measuring relative humidity. So these two thermometer, these two kind of thermometer are kept in the Stevenson screen. Another equipment that can, you can also keep in the Stevenson screen, screen is what we call the barometer. Barometer is used in measuring atmospheric uh, pressure. So th they are placed in what? In the Stevenson screen. Why is the Stevenson screen so important? And what are the features that must be met or conditions that must be met for it to be what? Appropriate. The standard condition is that for every Stevenson screen, it must be painted white. And that's it's for a reason. Why must it be painted white? Because white has the tendency of reflecting light unlike other colors that, that, has, that can easily absorb light white reflect light so civil screens are painted white so that they can reflect light or reflect it so to say so that it will not be absorbed in what into the box another one is that they are usually double roofed the roof you know normally every house have what one roof but in the case of civil screen they are made with double roof to reduce the amount of heat coming into the service screen. Another thing is that they must be lubed. You know how your lubed glasses are in your homes? They are slanted. Every service screen, you will see the image in the, in your, in the PowerPoint. They must be lubed so that there will be, there, there's what, there will be cross ventilation of what? Of uh, heat. It will not be stored in the what? Service screen. Another one is that anywhere you must erect this TV screen, it must be grassland, which is what the condition that must be meant for every standard uh, weather station. The TV screen also must have a leg, must stand on what wooden leg, mostly wooden leg, which must be at about 1.1 meters. 1.1 meters so that if they are too close to the ground, they absorb heat from the ground, but you know we are not interested in measuring it from the ground. We are interested in measuring the atmospheric temperature, atmospheric pressure, and relative humidity. Not every other any other heat. So heat coming from the ground can affect all this reading. So that's why the, all these features must be met. So these are the key features of of a, a, a Stevens screen. Another one before I forget is that when they are when they are constructed anywhere they must be uh, kept. The, wind, the doors must be facing north. The doors must be facing north so that they will not receive direct sun heat. All these are designed so that they can measure only room temperature. The last thing we are going to look at before the end of the class is what we call the weather element or element of the weather. We have about six elements of weather. You are well familiar with them. We talked about that. I taught you in what? In year eight. And I will quickly run through that. One of the first most important weather element is precipitation. Precipitation is otherwise called rainfall. You know, precipitation can be rainfall, it can be snow, it can be every depending on the location, the geographic, climatic region. So, uh, with the first one is what precipitation. The second one is temperature. It's another weather element. Another one is what uh, wind, and we have wind as you know, wind has two dimension. It has speed. It also has what direction. We have relative humidity. Then we have uh, atmospheric pressure. And finally, we have what we call the word cloud. Cloud is the only weather element that, do, that is not being measured using instrument. Every other weather element has their what? Their instruments. So we're going to stop here for the, today. By the time we come next class, we will be looking at each of these weather elements and we'll be looking dissecting through their what means of measurement that is to say their weather instrument i will analyze each of the weather instruments to you and how they are being used for measurement so i hope you have enjoyed this class hope to see you next time please stay safe thank you